Hello everyone, you are welcome to clip 4 in this part 7. So now we came to the fourth generation networks. Okay, uh, as I mentioned in the previous clip, so the fourth generation actually considered as the biggest step in the uh, in the um, cellular networks uh, due to several reasons actually. Uh, one reason that it has used a very flexible a modulation method based on the off DM. So in the off DM, we uh, break the bandwidth into smaller subbands. We can have thousands of subbands, two thousand of subbands. Each subband, for example, can be uh, selected. Uh, usually, it is around fifteen uh, kilohertz, but it can be also change it. Uh, in, in, in some other network so in, but the principle is to divide the bandwidth into some or large number of uh, subcarriers or subbands and each subband can m like mitigate the problem of uh, 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 frequency selective fading so it can manage with the channel uh, and also uh, uh, we can use different kind of technologies to get uh, the uh, uh, the full benefit of this flexibility, because once you have many subbands, then you can, for example, make what is known as a frequency aggregation. So you can you can increase the bandwidth as needed, or uh, or shrinking, or, or or reduce the bandwidth up uh, up to the uh, user requirements. So, for example, if we have a user that needs a lot of resources, very high data rate, then we can allocate much more subbands other users they use ju just for voice communication then we can reduce the subbands so such this this actually gives a lot of a flexibility in, in the frequency and also we can use these subbands at different times so we can use time uh, uh, scheduling and this frequency and also we can use them over space by using multiple antennas so you can see that we have many different right or uh, and higher uh, and and high uh, level of uh, flexibility between the uh, the uh, users and between and uh, based on the available or the required resources yeah so the 4G actually it was the motivation for 4G that because of this um, explosion in multimedia application so 3G was not enough at that time so 3G uh, as we said it is bare, bare user it was around 3 megabit per second or less so that was good for for exploring let's say uh, internet for uh, facebook application uh, if you want to upload some image or something but if you want to upload like one uh, gigabyte uh, of video or you would want to download several gigabytes four gigabytes of video over your mobile phone it was a nightmare at that time it takes a lot of time to do that uh, job and also to watch uh, like um, uh, high definition video it was not possible with the with the 3g like 4k video so this is actually was motivating uh, uh, engineers how to develop this 3g into the fourth uh, evolution of the 4g which can uh, like uh, get rid of these limitations in the 3g okay so um the 4G, as as we said, as I said, it based on the of DM uh, and um, also several technologies which actually started in the 3G, but also in the 4G, it has uh, 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 one very critical improvement on the core network. As we saw in the 3G, there was not that big development or changes in the core network it was based on the same concept base station base station controller the base station controller control several base stations together and then the base station controller connected to the mobile switch center and connected to the serving gbl support nodes which can deliver the ib or the packet data switching and so on but now in 4g the first thing get rid of this of this uh, 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 circuit switching at all so, okay so we don't have any more circuit switching this is this is one thing and the second thing um, remove uh, 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 or, or try to to uh, um, 
So in 4G, remove the base station controller, okay, or the radio, radio network controller, and move all functions in that controller to the node B, to the base station. So this uh, 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 step actually reduce a lot this latency and the complexity it was in the 3G and in the JSM. So now we move as much as we can from the from the functions that the, that that should be done in the radio network controller. It has been distributed and and moved to the to the base station itself. So the base station can take uh, care of all, of all functions that it was done uh, at the radio network controller and also involve more the mobile, uh, the, the, the user equipment involve more functions to be done there as well. Because in the recent years, the, the mobile phones uh, start to become like powerful in terms of computation and, and processing. So some required uh, uh, process can be done also in the handset or in the user equipment. So you can see here in this in this figure, you can see the the um, uh, the development. So this is in, in release six. So you can see that in in, th in third generation we have Node B and we have the radio network controller. We have the Cervix GPL support node and then we have the gateway GPL support node in in release six. And uh, uh, for the dots. Here for the control plan and the red line for the user plan. User plan means the data, the data of the user. It's uh, uh, that, uh, for example, exploring internet, VoIP or whatever. The dots are the control. For example, handover, uh, starting call, ending call, and this required for the for for, for the achievement of the network networks. So this is co called control plan. So you can see. Uh, here that uh, in in release seven we start the concept of direct tunnel so the or, or direct internet tunnel between the node be, be, between the uh, uh, mobile phone to the GPL support node so it, it 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 was possible now to to get rid of the civic GPL support node in the in the uh, data. Uh, or user data. So user data, the mobile phone, it can take care, but uh, it can take part of that uh, uh, functions that it was done in the Save GPL support node, and also the the other the other part distributed between the RNC and the gateway GPL support node. And after that, they move the. This is in release seven. They move the RNC with the node B actually and then we have the direct tunnel directly from the node b uh, and rnc to the uh, gateway gpl support node and the the, the saving gpl support node it takes care only for the control control uh, 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 plan so the control plan may be for example for the mobility because the saving gpl support node takes care about the mobility of of terminals where where, where is the terminal right now and in release 8, which is starting actually with the, the 4G, this is for the 4G, so you can see that we implement the last version of, of this uh, improvement, and now we, we have evolved node B, so the evolved or E node B actually is the same as, or is uh, uh, taking is a base station taking care for the radio path and also, and also it control itself, the, so everything related to the control uh, instead of do doing them separately in the radio network controller now it is done inside the base station so this remove a complexity reduce uh, a lot of uh, of uh, uh, latency and and delay and also power consumption and so on and also we remove this uh, like save uh, gps support node and now we, we we named it as as mobility management entity so the major thing of this MME actually is taking care of the control activities of the mobile. For example, starting a call, making, for example, the encryption, decryption, ciphering, and all the security, security issues and so on. So those done at the MME, it is called Mobility Management Entity. And then we have the system architecture evolution here, and we have the gateway. We have two gateways like serving gateway and bucket gateway, as we will see. But what I want you to know 
about this figure that how the 4G network was evolved or, or, or was developed in this uh, core network. So it was big movement actually in the core network. So you can see in this figure, for example, that we have here the uh, three levels as before, but in this level, of course, as usual, we have only the user equipment, okay? And in this level, this is the big achievement here. In this level, we have, this it is called the Evolved uh, Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. In this note, or in this level, we don't have any more radio network controller or base station controller. We don't have controller for the base for, for the base stations. We have only the base stations. It is called E node B. So evolved node B. So th those are node Bs that take care. So they can communicate with other node B in making, for example, handover between between cells. Okay, and this E uh, uh, E -U or or the radio network. Uh, uh, or radio access network is connected to the core network. Okay, so uh, uh, you can see that in the core network, it is named like Evolved Bucket System now. Evolved Bucket System. If you look inside, we don't have any more circuit switching. We don't have mobile switching center. We don't have circuit switching network. All of them here is IB based. So it is all IB protocol. Internet protocol is the major uh, uh, protocol used for both for the control plan and also for the user plan. Okay, so you can see here the MME actually, it doesn't take care anything about the user plan. So the data is not going through the MME, but MME is, is responsible about the, 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 the handover the, uh, uh, and the process required to, to guarantee the security and the encryption and decryption and, uh, um, uh, and um, the secure connection actually of, of, of uh, uh, the handset to the network. Okay, so this is taking care about the M MME. And the user plan is going through the, the uh, serving uh, 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 gateway as it is explained later. And then we have the bucket gateway where it is the, on the edge actually where it is connected to the external bucket data network like the internet. Okay, uh, actually every, every item here is explained in, in later so uh, but to save time I, we don't want to spend more time now we understand the structure of the mobile network for the cell network and this is the main issue of this of this of this part so you can see here i just distribute the the the, the functions for each of the item so you have here the mobile phone the, the part of the mobile phone like uh, it can take part of radio resource management mobility management payroll handling user plan data delivery uh, securing and optimizing radio inter the interface delivery and then we have the nodes for example it take internode uh, 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 handover for wording for for uh, a down link data during handover for example um, we have the saving gateway, so it, it, it uh, user plan tunnels for uplink and downlink data delivery, and we have the MME that we have mobility management, sec uh, security setting, and uh, peer handling as we mentioned them before. Okay. And also uh, in the core network, you can see here that we have the MME, uh, uh, and it is it can it can consulting the subscriber, uh, the, the home subscriber, the, the, or the host subscriber system. So in order to that, we, where we have here the authentication and security parameters, location management, user profile, it is stored here. It is somehow similar to the home location register in we, we have uh, seen before. And uh, here we have, we can see that uh, uh, again, remember this is the uh, uh, regarding only the control plan. So you do everything here about the control plan. We have the mobility management, uh, user equipment request bearer management. It, it, it starts here. And also we have the, uh, uh, the, the node B. It can take care about internode E node handover, state uh, transition, idle, active, and so on. So the information about the mobile phone, bureau management, and paging is taken by the E node B. 
okay and hand over between uh, 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 different uh, uh, MMEs and idle state mobility between MMEs is also taking care of that in this in this uh, uh, control plan in this CP. So in the control plan that we can see what is the requirements here in the 4G network. As I mentioned that we have put some of the functions for each item, for example, the function for MME, the authentication and security, as I mentioned, the mobility management, control of the setting up and releasing resources based on the user equipment activity mode changes, and <clears throat> for the serving gateway, uh, also, it 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 is uh, 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 responsible for the tunneling and uh, the GBRS tunneling protocol. So the interface and the communication based on this on this protocol between the mobile phone and the external network. And this is for the, for the packet uh, data network gateway. So uh, it is the edge actually router between the EBS and the external packet data network. So it is the highest level mobility anchor in the in the system, and usually it acts as the IB point of attachment for the user equipment. So uh, usually or typically the the, the packet uh, gateway allocates the IB address for to the user equipment. So it, it works like 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 the interface between the external packet data network and the mobile phones as it is shown here so we have e-node speeds and here we have the mobile phones for example and then we have between the serving uh, serving uh, gateway then we can see that we we can have control plan with the packet gateway related to the control of user plan tunnels user plan tunnels for you uplink and downlink data delivery and then the ip flow of user data to the external uh, network And uh, LT, uh, this is related to what we saw now related to the core network. Uh, now about the about the uh, radio interface, which is also very important in order to achieve the highest data rate, which can up to 3.3 gigabit per second in the downlink per sector. So in that in that case, how to achieve this? Actually, by by using aggregating spectrum. So it can in in, in the JS, in the LTE it can support up to five bands to be aggregated together and each band is twenty megahertz so the maximum it can it can allocate one hundred megahertz for one user if needed okay uh, as a bandwidth and using eight by eight MIMO it means that as we saw in the in the MIMO uh, bath so we we saw that it, it it is at least theoretically it might be possible to achieve eight separated channels over eight by eight so the data rate can be uh, enhanced considerably and also we can in 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 LTE advance it can support 128 quam in release at mash in, in release 12, sorry. And it's about to up to 256 quam, uh, which is uh, 4.5, uh, in, in 4.5 generation or in L LTE Advanced Pro, okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, and also LTE Advanced, it started the applications of cooperative relays and FIM2 cells. So as, as we can see here, this is the carrier aggregation up to 100 megahertz. And also, this is for the relay network. So the relay, uh, relay networks means that we can use like FIM2 cells. So we can use very small cell in order to deliver the message. So this can can be uh, could be used in in areas where the interference is very high, or sometimes the signal quality is very low. So for example, inside one building, so you can we can put there some like uh, uh, a small base station. It is called FIM to cell in that case, and this FIM to cell it might be connected to the main network by wire line, uh, uh, like for example using the uh, usual internet plug 
in that building and then it can like deliver the service inside that in, in, in that building and also it can it can be wireless in that case so we need to to manage the um, uh, the spectrum between the relay nodes and also the major uh, uh, macro cell or micro cell that we have in the area there's some explanation about the relay nodes here so uh, some new and great concepts applied in the 4G MIMO and Massive MIMO Massive MIMO means that you, we use a lot of MIMO antennas so it can be hundreds of them especially that at, at millimeter waves where we have the wavelength is very small so we can put like, like uh, two-dimensional or even three-dimensional arrays of antennas uh, carrier aggre um, aggregation okay small cells and relay nodes opportunistic scheduling even it started with high speed packet access in 3g but it was more utilized in 4g optimizing the core network with direct tunneling and moving most functions to the base stations from the controller to the base station all ib core network so actually and this is only some of the great improvement in the uh, 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 which has have been uh, achieved in the 4g network yeah, so th those are the main things in, in 4G. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, that in 4G, it, uh, from the data rate point of view, it was possible to achieve very high data rate. Um, uh, for example, for me, I, I have 4G contract, and uh, um, just I was uh, checking the internet speed, and it was it was more than 250 megabit per second, which is actually more than enough for usual uh, usage of the internet uh, and uh, uh, the question now comes why the need for 5g after this very high data rate uh, very good quality for the uh, for internet application for ib application what was the need for to go or to think about the 5g actually the the, the answer is the industry this time so now we start to think about different application, different target. Our target was the consumer, the average consumer, people. But now we start to think about machines because also machines need to, to be connected together. And in machines need to be connected together, it needs sensors. And it needs. And now we, we, we come to the concept or to the topic of Internet of Things, IoT. So sometimes we need to distribute hundreds of thousands or thousands of, of, of sensors in certain area. So 4G is not able to deliver or to provide this uh, huge number of, 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 uh, 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 of connections within, within like limited area. For example, in one kilometer square, if, if we want to support, let's say 100,000 element, it, it, it is really uh, like challenging for 4G to provide such kind of massive connections. It is, it is called like massive, massive machine type communication. So we need to support very large number of, of, of uh, 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 machines or sensors. And in the same time, uh, the good thing that most of them, they don't need very high data rate. So we don't need that high data rate, but anyhow, we need to, uh, to, to provide channels for, for this 100,000 or 1 million terminal within one kilometer square. Uh, and th th this is one problem was in, in 4G. So the second problem was the latency actually. So latency, it means that the delay, uh, because in the 4G, the network was based on off DM, as we know. So in, in off DM, um, actually, uh, uh, we need to maintain the orthogonality. So, if one sensor or one device wants to be connected to the, to, to the to the to the network, to the core network, or to the to the node uh, E node B, then they need to ask for for uh, like a, a channel and then to give the permission to send and to keep the orthogonality between between users. However, this can introduce like large latency, large delay. And now in the uh, many in applications, in, in industrial application, we need the time delay to be limited, very small. For example, less than 
10 millisecond that we, we we must have that 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 latency that shouldn't be more than 10 millisecond in some applications the, 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 it is even more strict it can be 1 millisecond for example the, the allowed delay actually these time delays was not possible to be achieved with high reliability in 4G so for example if i want to achieve 99% of the time or 0 0.9 so that that we cannot we cannot guarantee this 10 millisecond or 1 millisecond the third the third thing is reliability so we need very high reliable because now we are talking about industry so if you are looking for some video and uh, the the reliability of that communication was not that high so we drop some frames of that video it is not a big issue but if you are like transmitting control signal of a smart grid and then that signal was not uh, arrived because of issue of reliability then it will be it can be a disaster in some some cases so the highest reliability very small latency very large number of supporting terminals the, these things was where the main motivation for uh, engineers to think about the 5g of course Beside this, more data rate can be achieved and uh, higher uh, like efficiency. Of course, they, there can be much more like like improvements in the system itself. But the main motivation was thinking about industry, thinking about like governmental application, industrial application, uh, 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 and so on. So it, it was not only to, to, to achieve like connecting people or either either like by voice or by like uh, multimedia, but now we are thinking about connecting machines together. So how this problem is we have solved it and uh, what, the, was it, what was the concept of 5G network and why we think after that beyond 5G about 6G, this what is what we are going to, to uh, talk about in the next uh, clip. Thanks a lot and see you uh, in the sixth clip. Thanks.